Are you wondering if the most popular API clients are really the best or if there are better alternatives? I am and I just want to pick the best option so that I can focus on more important tasks. So I tried 20 API clients to figure out which one is the only one you'll ever need. So how does this test work? I used about 50 criteria to assess the API clients, but I have summarized them into four key points. First of all, does the tool make it easier for you to send requests and see responses? Second, does the tool allow you to check if the API or endpoints you're using work as expected? Can you test your request? Third, can you document your request? And finally, does the API client make it easier to manage your requests? Because requests should be organized, easy to find, and easy to share. So we have send requests, test requests, document requests, and manage requests. But depending on your profile, your needs, one aspect might be more important than others. But even with these criteria, it will be absolutely impossible to choose the best overall. It's like trying to decide who is the best athlete between LeBron James and Yushin Bolt. So just like in sports, we can categorize API clients. Here is how I've categorized them. We can split API clients into two major groups, graphical user interface and text-based or CLI API clients. But that's not enough. We can go a little bit further and distinguish between multi-purpose and single-purpose clients. So we end up with four categories. Now I'll go through each category and give you a quick presentation of each API client. And along the way, I'll show you more detailed criteria that will help you choose the best tool for you. And at the very end, I'll tell you what I've decided to use and it's probably not what you expect. When we talk about API clients, Postman comes first to mind. So Postman is the most popular API client, but you might not realize that Postman is much more than an API client. It's an API platform that comes with an entire ecosystem of tools and services. Of course, you can easily send, test, document, and manage your requests. And they've introduced a flow feature that seems really cool. If you want to go beyond basic usage, you can integrate Postman with your CI CD pipeline, monitor your APIs, and create mock servers, and the list goes on and on. And there, is, there are just too many features to fit in one video. Considering the number of features and the relative ease of use, I totally understand why Postman is for most people, the default choice. However, there is another API client that I would also qualify as an API platform. It's API Dog. So API Dog focuses on the API design first approach. It's geared toward dev teams that build and maintain APIs, and it has very cool features such as smart mocks and code generations in multiple programming languages. But if you are looking for a simpler tool, it might depend on your main focus. If you are mainly concerned with testing, you might want to try Testfully. Testfully is a new API client that focuses on testing and automation. So it makes it very easy to create test suites and has API monitoring features. There is also SOAP UI, but I must warn you, that is not the easiest tool to use and the user interface is a bit outdated. And SmartBear, the company behind SOAP UI, also has a tool called Ready API, but I haven't tried it out. If testing is not your primary concern, but you still want a versatile tool, you have a few options starting with Insomnia. So I hadn't used Insomnia for about 10 months, and when I used it again, I could see that they've added a lot of new features, and it does seem like it's moving in the direction of becoming more of an API platform application. With Insomnia, you can generate collections from an open API specification file, you can add test suite, but most importantly, the tool is now becoming a collaboration tool for teams. Hopscotch is another API client that focuses on team collaboration with an emphasis on developer experience. It's open source and it has a very clean and simple interface. Thunder client is a very powerful VS Code extension with over 
4 million downloads. It's a great option if you hate leaving your code editor. Bruno is an open source Git friendly API client that is based on text files representing your requests. Rapid API, which is used to be called Po, is a native Mac app that you can use with your Rapid API account, but it also works without an account and you can use it to send requests to any API. RESTFOX is a web-based API client. You can use it through restfox.dev or run it locally. And CREA is a REST and gRPC client. And if you mainly work with gRPC, this might be a good option for you. All these API clients have chosen versatility and cover several use cases. But as we'll see now, some API clients have chosen to focus on very specific use cases. One of the most popular options in the single purpose category is Swagger. Swagger is mainly focused on documentation and it's built around the open API specification, but you can also use it to send requests, but it will be limited to the endpoints that are documented in the Swagger UI. Aspen is a very new API client with a very nice interface, no clutter, you just enter your API URL, press enter and you can see a nicely rendered response. So there is also an integrated AI you can interact with and ask anything about your request response. Yak is a new open source API client. It's multi-protocol and it has a very nice auto completion and it's super intuitive to use. I particularly liked the keyboard shortcuts, which are a very nice touch. And if you want to avoid any sort of distraction or clutter, this is a great option. You might be familiar with HTTPI in the terminal, but did you know that there is now a desktop and a web app version? So it has a simple interface, it's easy to use and it looks great. And you can even use some icons and color code your collections. We'll talk about HTTPI terminal later, but looking at all these graphical interface API clients, you might have noticed that the vast majority of them look extremely similar. Requests are grouped under a collection or a folder-like structure. You can create environments and variables. You have a URL bar with some request options and a response panel. And several of them have a pre and post request script and you can do testing. And many of them allow you to document your API using markdown format. That being said, even if they share a lot of common features and concepts, there are some key elements in their approach that could make a massive difference for you. A surface analysis is not enough. We need to go deeper. And one element that can be a total deal breaker is how the request is sent. So let me explain. If you use RESTFOX directly through devfox.dev, you could run into course issues because the request is sent through the browser from the restfox.dev domain. And if you use any other browser-based client, that's something to consider. But even if you are using a desktop application, the request you're sending might go through a proxy server first before getting to the API server. And if you have some security or privacy constraints, make sure you go through the documentation to really understand what happens when you send a request using one of those tools. For instance, you might not be able to use Postman in some cases, but that's not all you need to consider when we talk about privacy. So when you save your requests, your collections, your environment variables, where are they saved? Are they saved in the cloud or in your local machine? And in what format are they saved in? Is it a human readable format? And can you import and export your requests and collections? On most tools, you'll be able to import or export requests in a Postman JSON file or an Insomnia JSON file format. But there might be some incompatibilities or information loss along the way. For example, something that I absolutely love about Insomnia is that the environment variables are saved in a JSON format and I can nest my configuration. But when I exported my Insomnia environment and imported it in HTTPI, I had some issues because dots are not supported in the HTTPI desktop application. However, there is another reason why the data format and the way your requests are saved 
are very important. If you work on a team, you might want to share your request with others. And even if you work alone, you might want to track the changes you've made to your request. Several API clients such as Postman, Insomnia, API Dog, Hopscotch, and many others will give you the opportunity to create an account and save your data in the cloud. They'll also offer advanced governance features, teams, and so on. Some tools such as Bruno and Yak store all the data locally on your machine, but it doesn't mean you can't share your request. It's quite the opposite. Because your data is stored as a human readable files, they can be added to a version control system such as Git and shared with others. The concept of storing your requests as plain text files can actually be taken much further. You don't really need a fancy application to send requests. Text-based and CLI API clients might be much more powerful than you imagine. So let's have a look at some options in that category. Let me show you the most elegant and simple way to send an API request. You just have to create a dot HTTP file, write your request and press send. That's it. But don't mistake simplicity for a lack of features. You can use environments, variables, generate code snippets, and much more. If you use VS Code, all you need is the REST client extension. And it's the same thing if you use one of the JetBrains ID. Now you don't even need to leave your code editor to send an API request. HTTP YAC also uses .HTTP files and you send requests by running a terminal command. But this time, you can also add pre and post request scripts and test responses with assertions. There is a VS Code extension that is very similar to the REST client extension and there is also a notebook extension that is very similar to Jupyter Notebooks for Python. Perl is another text-based API client that is very similar to HTTP YAC. And with Perl, you create a .hurl file where you define your request. And alongside your request, you can add assertions, capture response values, and use them in subsequent requests, which is very convenient for chaining requests. In this category, we have what many would consider the ultimate API client, and that is curl. Indeed, curl is a very popular and versatile command line tool. It's actually so powerful that libcurl, the underlying library of curl, is used by millions of devices, apps, and tools every single day. But with curl, you have to do a lot of things manually. For example, if you want your response parsed as a JSON, you have to use an extra command line tool. You could use HTTP terminal command instead, which is more user-friendly and you get color-coded JSON as response and a few default behaviors that make things much easier. But if you love the terminal and you hate using your mouse, but you still want a bit of graphical interface, I found exactly what you need. It's simply called posting. It's a terminal user interface API client where you can create requests within a collection, send requests and see the responses, and all your requests are saved as YAML files so you can easily share them with others. Overall, text-based and CLI API clients are great options and they can be extremely versatile, especially if you combine them with other scripting tools. However, they can be slightly more intimidating and require more technical knowledge. But there is a major thing left to address. When we talk about sending a request, there are actually many ways of doing that. When you have a client and a server, they need to agree on how they will talk to each other. And that's the protocol. HTTP is the most popular protocol on the web and several of these tools only support that protocol. So if you want to use other protocols such as gRPC or WebSocket, then you have to make sure you pick a client that supports those protocols. On top of that, you have authentication. Again, there are different ways to authenticate. It could be done through a request header with an API key. There might be OAuth involved, or, you could, or it could be done through, through cookies. And all of that needs to be taken into account. And in part, that's why graphical interface tools are so appealing, 
because they make all of those different ways of sending requests easier and accessible even to less technical people. So based on all the criteria we've seen, let me show you what I have decided to use and why. Sorry to interrupt, I just wanted to add this very important part. So I wanted to address something. So as I was doing all this research, it really made me think about developer experience. It's actually very easy for me to go online and talk about this tool and that tool. But what's actually very hard to do is to build tools that are used by literally millions of people. And some of those tools are even free. And even if they are not free, they bring value nonetheless. So it's only fair that they get something in return and no one is forcing us to buy them anyway. So I really wanted to take this opportunity to show my gratitude to all the developers, product managers, and everybody involved in building amazing API clients that, and all other tools that make our lives easier as developers. And in particular, I wanted to thank Greg who created Insomnia, amazing tool. I used it for a very long time and who is now working on Yak. So go check it out. And it was really enlightening to read some of his blog posts and also one of the reasons why I'm adding this part to the video. And of course, Daniel Stenberg who created Curl. So yeah, just wanted to say, my, tell my gratitude to all the people behind the tools that we're using. So if you have a favorite API client, I invite you to show your support and your love in the comments and tell us what you love about the tools that you are using. So yeah. Now, back to the main topic. Okay, so this was actually a very easy choice for me because one of my goals is to get better at using terminal commands and I want to get better at shell scripting. And that is why I'm going to go full on with curl. So using curl in combination with other command, command line tools totally aligns with my learning goals, but that's not all. So of course it makes managing requests much more complicated and it's harder to deal with complex payload, for example, but I've already found a few ways to make things easier when using curl and I'm still working on my workflow. So curl has been around for more than 25 years now and it's not going anywhere. So I can still share my curl commands with other developers and most API clients can export and import requests as curl, as curl commands and I can even write scripts to convert my commands into other formats. So my reasoning is that mastering curl before even considering the use of any other API client makes total sense in my situation. And I hope all the criteria that I've given you in this video have been very useful to you and gave you more clarity on what could be the best API client for your use case. If you are new to this channel, so welcome. Here I mostly talk about JavaScript, backend engineering, and Nest.js. So if those are topics in which you are interested, I invite you to subscribe. And if you already subscribe, thank you very much for your support. We are now 10,000 on the channel. And again, thank you for helping this channel grow and see you very soon in the next video.